Yes, Lord, a valid, legitimate. We gonna get that again. My God, in the name of Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. God put something in my spirit through the night about prayer. About prayer. In your word, it said for the shepherds, pray for your people. Pray for your people. We don't know many times what they're going through. We don't know and understand sometimes what through the week that they're encountering. But he said, pray for them. All you know them by that name, by their names. Pray for them by name. They need us to pray for them. We don't just need to preach to them. We don't just need to teach them. But we need to pray for them. We need to be their number one intercessor. Lord said, pray for your people. Good morning, Sister Erica. Good morning, Alfred Banyard. Hallelujah. He said, pray. Yeah, right there when she said it right, have your way, Lord. That's it. That does it. Kelly Horton, good morning. Hey, pray for your people. Pray for your people. Call them by their name. Pray for them. Pray, pray for them. Pray for them through the week. Pray for their protection. Pray for their minds. Lord said, pray for them. Sit down to the table. Call their names. Pray for the saints. Pray for your people. Every pastor that's on here, whether you, whatever your gift is, but you sit in the senior place of a church. The Lord said to me, he said, pray for the people. Pray for them. Cover them. Don't just preach to them. Don't just expect them to always be on point. He said, pray for them. And call them by name. Those that you can remember. Certainly, you know, if you have a large, large group of people, you may have to get a list. You may have to have your team print you out a list. Put it in alphabetical order. And pray for your people. That's one of our jobs as pastors. Is that we are to pray for the flock. Pray for them. Name them. Submit their names before the Lord. Because we don't know what they are enduring through the week. But pray for them. <laughs> pray this prayer over them that they might have a valid, legitimate move of the Holy Spirit. Pray over them. Pray for them name by name. Many of them are pursuing education or they're pursuing careers some of them are in jobs that are not kind or friendly some of them are doing well but pray for the people that are in your care some of them are going back and forth to work cover them cover their their cars or their modes of transportation trains buses Whatever it is that moves them from one space to another. Pray over your people. Call them by their name. And, and the Holy Spirit said, pray for the people. Pray for them. Those of us that shepherd the flock. Pray for them. If you can't remember their names, get a list. Print it out for you. And pray for your people. Mm. Pray over your people. Pray for them. Pray that they have good lives. Pray that they have lives that are beneficial. And pray that whatever um, 
obstacles that come in their life, pray that they can recall the scriptures that you have taught them. Pray that they can recall the messages that Holy Spirit will bring it back to their remembrance. But we've got to pray for our people. We've got to pray for our people. We don't know all that they're going through. And we don't know what their turmoils are. We only see them uh, in the pew. Or we see them on Zoom. But the Holy Spirit, he just began to deal with me. He said, pray for your people. Call them by their names. Pray for them. Call them by their names. Make yourself a prayer list as a senior shepherd and began, I know we do a lot of studying in the word and I know we do a lot of teaching of the word, but I was very clear. He said, pray for the people that the shepherd should be one of the strongest intercessors in a church. And I believe that that is an area that we may be neglecting. I, I, my, I, my, 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 my cathedral uh, babies, they know, men and women of God know that I, I, if I see them, uh, like sometimes on my ceiling, I wake up and I see certain ones and I'll stop, get up and start praying for them because I don't know what they're going through. And 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 I and I see and I see them. I, I see I can see their circumstances, or I may be aware of their circumstances. Like I know Jefferson, Doctor Jefferson is in school, so I know I'm praying. Or I may know that this one is working, Sister Rhonda and others. You know, or I, or I get a sensing. Sometimes they don't tell me anything. I just get a sensing. They may be having a little marital problem, or they may be having a little conflict. Uh, or I pray for the mothers because I know that they're aging and they have certain things going on in their bodies and in their lives. But he said to me, pray for your people name by name. None of us have too many sheep. None of us. Somebody said, well, I got 20,000. doesn't matter. Have your membership team print out their list. And, and you pray for them. If you're co-pastoring with a spouse, pray for them. Don't pray general prayers. Pray over them and call their names. This is what the Spirit of the Lord said to me. Pray, pray, pray. Yes, Tracy, I, I cover you and Brother Robinson and the boys. I pray, pray, pray. Some of them are involved in sports. Pray for them. Pray that they are not injured. Pray that they don't break their necks or their spines or they don't have serious impacts or injuries while they're playing sports. Pray over your people that we must be the most engaged intercessor in the church. And I know I'm saying something really good. I know that I, this pray over their minds. Pray for them, cover them. When, and this is why we ask them, let me know what, you know, keep, keep in touch with the church office or the pastoral team. Let us know what's going on. They're traveling, getting car accidents, car wrecks, or they're out of town, maybe funerals or family gatherings, weddings, whatever. Pray for your people. Oh, God put that in my spirit. Pray for your people, pastors. We expect a lot from them. We expect them to hear the word, implement the word, and carry the word forth. We, ex we, we have a lot of expectation from them. We expect them to give and to support the work with their substance. We expect them to give their gifts, their talent. We expect a lot from them. And we should. Hallelujah. If we feed them, 
then we can expect them to work in the vineyard. But are we praying for our people? Are we praying for them name by name? Pray for the people, shepherds. And uh, sometimes, you know, as a shepherd, you're not happy with the sheep. You're not, you know, thrilled with their choices sometimes or you're not thrilled with their decisions and how they're living their lives. But the Spirit of the Lord said, pray for them. Pray. Pray for them. Call them by their names and pray over them. And whatever other groups you have. I have several groups. The Network of Churches. They pray for me on Thursdays. But the Lord said, pray for them. Pray for the network pastors. Pray for the network members. Pray for them. I have a tribe of women, over 400 now. Pray for them. Pray for them. Call their names. As much as God has given you, pray for the people. Because the enemy is busy. Pray for their children. Pray for their families. Pray for their finances. Pray for their health. Pray for their relationships. Pray for favor over their lives. Pray for their health. Pray for their mental well-being. Pray for the people. That was a word that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, pray for your people. I was walking through the vestibule yesterday, the foyer, the narthex, and members were coming in and and uh, I saw them and some of them grabbed me and I began to pray over them and let them know I'm praying for you. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm praying for you. Glory to God. I'm praying for you in the spirit. I'm praying for you. I'm praying over your lives. I'm praying over your families. I'm praying over your finances. We must become stewards of prayer as shepherds. As overseers, as leaders, we must not only feed them, but we must war for them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We must, we must not only feed them, but we must war for them. We must war in the spirit for them. Now, that that part, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overseer Robert, I'm not just preaching to you. I'm praying for you. I'm, I'm, I am talking to God about you. My God, I am talking to God about you. I'm talking to God for you. I'm talking to God. I'm mentioning your name. I'm calling your name and your children and your life. I'm calling your name to God. I'm not just preaching to you. And those of us that are in leadership, we must pray for our people. They are going through so many things. They don't tell us and they don't have to tell us. You should be able to tap in to the spirit for your people. You should be able to tap in. You should be able to discern. I, 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 and I thank the Lord for the keenness that he has given me in the spirit uh, to pray for our people. Pray, pray. We, 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 we don't necessarily get excited. There's Pastor John Davis. Maybe sometimes we get a little frustrated with them because we don't see maybe their progress. We're giving them the word, we're feeding them, the sower sowing the word, and maybe their progress is slow. You know, it would bless them if you would go to them and say, you know what, as your pastor, as your shepherd, I want you to know I'm praying for you. I am praying for you. I am calling your name to the Lord. And I know that there are some senior pastors. I know that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know there's some pastors on here, some bishops, some overseers, apostles. I know you're here. And I want to challenge you as Holy Spirit has challenged me. 
pray for your people. Don't just preach to them. Don't just teach them, but war for them. Glory to God. Oh, that's probably the most uh, uh, vital gift you can give as a shepherd is that you're warring for the people. Pray for your people. Call their names. Your, you know, my children are part of my, are part of our cathedral family. My, my sister, you know, my family, nephews and stuff. But I pray for them, not just as my family, but as an intricate part of the kingdom of God. And I want, I want all of us this week, we're going to focus on intensifying our prayer life. Intensifying our prayer life. We do a lot of teaching, pastors. We do a lot of teaching. We do a lot of preaching. We do a lot of studying. We do a lot of writing out sermons and visioning. We do a lot. But you should spend one full day of praying for your people. In addition to your study, in addition to your time in prayer, and even when you are studying. Even when you are preparing to preach or preparing to teach, they should, they should come across your face. They should come across your eyes. You should be able to craft the word in a way that ministers to them, that you have them in your minds. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I want this week, uh, this, well, we don't know how long, you know, I say 40 days, it's been two years, but this is, is deeply, uh, I believe still lacking deeply, uh, in my heart that our prayer life can be deeply intensified and impacted by our relationship with Holy Spirit. And I want to start with the shepherds. I want to start with whatever your gifting is. I'm not, you may be the apostle of the house, or you may be whatever your gifting is, or whatever your name, but you're the overseer. You're the chief spiritual officer. These people cannot make it on their prayers alone. They are going to need the senior leaders the chief spiritual officer to stand in their gaps, to make up the hedge. We, we've got to do a better job about intentionally praying for the people in our care. Now, if you are over a ministry, if you are over the, the worship team, if you are over the leadership team, you're over the usher boards, or you're over the whatever team you're on. You now are what we call an under shepherd, a lay leader, and you must pray for those in your care. So you have 10 people in your, in your worship ministry. You have a band, you have singers like we do. Then the leader must pray for them as well. Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We, we get hung up, I think, on the teaching ministry. Uh, we get hung up on that. Jeremiah says, I will give you leaders or shepherds, poemans, pastors, after my own heart, and they will lead and feed. So our Feeding may be really, really rich, really good. But what about our leading? And our leading must come by prayer. This is why it is dangerous for any person to not have a local church, not have a, a pastor, a shepherd, whatever that is, maybe their gifting, maybe an apostle, or, but we call the senior leader of the church the pastor. That may not be their gift. So 
chief spiritual officer, CSO, uh, the CSO of the house, the set person that is set there, that has the final say, that has all the responsibility, ultimately has to take the hit no matter what. You must be an intercessor. You must be a prayer leader. You must lead them by prayer. You must lead them as Holy Spirit leads you. You must lead the flock. I serve as the chief spiritual officer of the Holy Ghost Cathedral. I have members that are in person. And because of the pandemic, I now have members that are virtual. But I must know them. I must pray for them. I have a prayer pastor, uh, Pastor John Kish. He helps me in the virtual space of prayer. If there's anything going on, anything happening, he allows that me to know and he prays with them. And they, but ultimately, I have to pray too. I want us to increase our awareness of prayer. As senior leaders, you are teaching, you are studying, you are praying for the message, you are praying for the anointing, you're praying for the revelation of the word, but are you praying for each individual person that is in your care? And sometimes, you know, I, 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 I pray because I see their faces or I get something from the spirit of God that lets me know I need to pray, or I know that they're on an assignment, they're in school, or they're traveling to some type of family event. And so I know how to intensify that. Or they dance across my ceiling in the middle of the night. But I, I just, I feel like Holy Spirit is saying something to, that's bigger than that. Pray for your people. Pray over them. Pray for them. You and I must be the chief intercessor in the house. I don't care how many people are on your intercessory prayer ministry. I don't care how many people. You should be the chief worship leader. I don't care how many people on your worship team. You should be the chief musician in that house. Whether you play the instrument or not. You are the leader. The chief spiritual officer. You Sometimes we put more on the people than God is requiring of them. God is really requiring that of us. I'm not saying we don't delegate. I'm not saying we don't expect uh, people to do their work based on their gifting and callings. But you've got to be the chief. And I just hear this. We fuss at the people about being lazy and not being committed and not being present and not being accountable. And I get it. But are we present? Are we praying on our knees for these people? Or, in our, you know, my prayer space is in my kitchen. My God, I'm standing at the, at, at the island and I, I'm just praying for them, just praying over them. Or I'm in the sink washing dishes and putting dishes in the dishwasher. And I'm, I'm praying over the people. And I want this to become a stronger a uh, uh, calling to you, not your events, not your services, but praying for your people. Pray for your people to get a breakthrough. Pray for the people to have an encounter with God. We must do a better job in praying for the people. Now, let's move to the next part of you having a better prayer life. I want those of you that are watching this broadcast, I want you to write down in the chat, wherever you are on Zoom, wherever you are, if you're on the call, write it on a piece of paper. I need and want a better prayer life. I need and want a better prayer life. Ooh, come on, Dr. Kim. I need a better prayer life. I want a stronger prayer life. Now, as shepherds, we must pray more for the people. We don't understand 
all they go through. We don't understand all that they are encountering every day. We must pray in the Holy Ghost. Now, let me tell you what happens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need and want a better prayer life. And I don't care what level of prayer you're at. You should be participating in this. I want a stronger prayer life. I need a better, a stronger prayer life. Hallelujah. I'm good in the word. I'm good in the ministry. But my prayer life needs attention. Ooh, shakama masia. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Imagine the shepherd is praying for you. And imagine you are praying for you. And you are covering the shepherd. Now, imagine how in the spirit... The, the, the movement of that. Imagine what that looks like in, in the spirit. I know some of you are great at preaching and teaching. And you're great at fussing on Facebook. You're good. You're good. You're really good at it. But your prayer life. Your prayer life. I want us to understand. Wanisha Swain, I see you, Dr. Hatcher. We want and need a better prayer life. Let me tell you what, shepherds, let me just tell you something. The one thing that we've got to watch out for is frustration. We've got to watch out. That is what happened with Moses. Uh, Pastor Gilbert Vaughn gave me a word many, many years ago. He said, be very careful that, that you don't hit the rock. Moses was on his way to the promised land. But he got frustrated with the people. Not the devil, but with the people. And let me tell you something. Some of y'all, y'all something. Y'all not, y'all something. <laughs> y'all something, praise God. And imagine you got two, three hundred of y'all. It, 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 it's, it's not an easy task. And imagine you got two, three thousand. Imagine you got 20 or 30 thousand. I've never desired to be a mega pastor. I, 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 3,000 is, is all God promised me, and that's, I'm good. I'm good with two or 300. I'm telling you, the three or two, 300 that God has blessed me with in the local house, I'm good. I'm really good. Because when you think about it, you got to pray for them. You got to study for them. You got to, you got to intercede for them. You get, when you think about the work that this involves as a chief spiritual officer, it's nothing to be coveted. Oh, my God. But the one thing that we have to be careful with ourselves as shepherds, as the chief spiritual officer, is frustration caused by the people. The frustration that's caused by the people. When they are stubborn or they are slow, lethargic, or they get an attitude with you, they break rank, they walk off from their assignments, they don't tell you all of these things that happen. It will cause us to be frustrated, hit the rock, and not make it to Canaan. And, 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 and I, oh, shakaba, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, Sister Ponder. Come on. A prayer life. And, and, and I know we love the word. Oh, we love the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Presiding Bishop C.J.B. That's me. Oh, yes. We love the word. We love preaching the word. We got our NLTs. We got our NIV. We got our dates. We got all of our Bibles. And we love that. But our prayer life. Our prayer life. And as leaders, we must be careful of frustration. Being frustrated, not growing at the pace we wanted. The money is short. You know, I, I, I've got some, some precious people that volunteer. And, uh, you know, I try to, I always try to bless people with a little money because I know that money is an answer to all things. They're not on payroll. I hope the IRS is not listening. They're not on payroll, but I try to give them little stipends 
And oh God, let me miss a stipend. <laughs> it, it's not even a paycheck. But let me miss it. Huh, baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if the offerings are not where they need to be, I got to do payroll first. We got to take care of administrative costs. And then stipends are not at the highest level of the priority list. But you would think they would say, listen, we're praying. We know that, you know, maybe the, the offerings didn't meet the budget this week. or No, they don't think about that. They don't care. They just want their money. And so one of the areas as, as spiritual leaders that we, the enemy, must, will, 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 will torment us is frustration. Oh, I'm teaching today. I'm teaching so good today. Frustration. And if you're a Sunday school superintendent or you are in an area, you know, your teachers ain't coming through like you want you. Your psalmist, your, your music team needs, you know, and, 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 and the usher and the health ministry. And you got to worry about the campus and keeping it clean. And then the roof goes bad. And so the area that we as leaders get attacked is through frustration. Frustration. And even sometimes the immorality and some of the other things that you hear about in the ministry is as a result of frustration. It's that as a result, and the, and the, and the pastor is usually the last person to get paid, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and so it's easy for us to get frustrated and get frustrated with the people. And the people have a gift on them to frustrate us. They hurt us. They wound us. They, they, they tell stories on us. They don't they misrepresent us. And in their growth, in their spiritual walk, in their growth, they're not always at their best. They're not always walking in their maturity. And here we are walking with them through their immaturities, through their, through their whatever it is that they go through. Here we are. And so we're subject to, to feel that. They don't think we have feelings. They don't think we... Uh, care we don't we don't have a heart we don't we don't we don't go home and and have to close the door and pull the cover up over our, they don't think about that they think about themselves and what they think you're doing to them they don't think about what they're doing to you and so we have to be we have to really really understand the vitality of prayer in a church in a ministry in our homes and I want to really dig into this what is the role of Holy Spirit in prayer? What is the role of Holy Spirit in prayer? Sheep always talk about shepherds and they did this and they did that and they didn't do this and they did and she did this and he did that. And they they good at that. They can I they oh Lord they can pick us apart. Lord Jesus and then shepherds get with other shepherds and pick sheep apart. <laughs> But I want to say this. Prayer is missing. When, when, we, when we come into this frustration space, it, 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 prayer is missing. Prayer is missing. And that is the missing element of what I believe needs to come back to a higher level in order for us to see this Pentecost, this move of Holy Spirit hit our churches and hit our lives. It's all, if you trace it back, if you trace back any outpouring, if you trace back any outpouring, it was tied to prayer. It was always tied to some level of prayer, some level of fasting, some level of consecration, some level of seeking the Lord in an intentional way. Ooh, oh God, hallelujah. What is the role of Holy Spirit in prayer? Uh, if I were to say what, if I were to ask you, what is the role of Holy Spirit in preaching? You would know. I, I, we, we, we love the preaching part of it. We love that, that, that connecting. And I love it. I, I, I listen, I've been doing this for 47 years. I don't have nothing else to do now, but this, 
preaching and teaching the word of God, studying uh, the word of God, investing in myself, the word, the, the for the word of God to be true to the text. But prayer, <laughs> prayer, prayer. What is your prayer life like? What is your prayer life like? And after you have heard the word of truth, after you have heard the word of God that is sent through your chief spiritual officer, now you must make application of the word. And the way in which I believe the enemy causes a disconnect is that we pray to preach, but do you pray to receive? Mm. Good God Almighty. Come on, somebody. <laughs> ah, God, somebody write that down. That, that's, that's Holy Ghost. We pray and prepare to preach. We pray to bring fresh manna. We pray uh, to, to, to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. But do you pray to receive? What is your level of receptivity? What is your level and then of receptivity, but also of execution of the word of God? What is your real prayer life like? You might be a great preacher. We might be great teachers, but what is your prayer life, preacher? What is your prayer life like, pastor? What is your prayer life? And it's easy to slide away from that, worship leader. It's easy to get away from that, worship team. I, 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 I'm going to be meeting with mine very soon. <laughs> what, prayer, what is our leadership? What is your prayer life like? And what role does Holy Spirit play in prayer? Hallelujah. Woo. You, 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 you want to, you want to raise up a church. You want to raise up people, but are you teaching them the significance of prayer? Do you pray for them? Do you pray for your people and people? Do you pray? Do you pray for your church? Do you pray for your shepherd? Do you pray for people who are in the body with you. What is our prayer life like? Woo. You, we pray to preach. We pray to give it to you. But do you pray to receive it and to apply it to your life? Do you pray not to be offended by the word? Some of you are offended. And, and you carry an offense. It ain't that much fussing to be done, but you are fussing. Listen, I'm telling you. And, and these are telltale signs that we are missing in prayer. I want you to go to Ephesians. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Ephesians chapter number one. Ephesians chapter number one. And, and this, this, this just blesses me, hallelujah, because uh, when I hear the Spirit of the Lord speak to us and speak to me for us here in the school of the Holy Spirit, I want to be true to what he said. I want to be true to what he said, hallelujah. Some of you have great expectations of your spiritual leader. And, and you should, I don't, I don't have any problem with that. You should have a great, you should expect us to live holy. You should expect a fresh word. You should expect us to live upright and to be models of what we preach. You should expect that. But we should expect that of you as well. We should expect that of you as well. <laughs> we should expect that of you as well. We should be able to Put a demand on you like you put a demand on us. Now, I want you to hear this, and 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 this. Oh God, I I I I I want to go here to, to um. I want to go to Ephesians chapter number one. Hallelujah. 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 
Now, now watch what Paul says here. And I'm going to start in verse 13. Uh, in him, you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. This is Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. Therefore, I also, after I heard, heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of the saints do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers this is the chief spiritual officer this is Paul the overseer the apostle of this work and he says now that I've heard of your faith in the Lord I have not stopped praying for you. Good God Almighty. Whoa, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He says, and I pray, watch this, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Shepherds, if you're looking for a prayer, a, a prayer that is Holy Spirit driven, Holy Spirit driven. Here is a great prayer for shepherds to pray over their people. And I've been praying it for years. He says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that over the saints at the cathedral. I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. I pray this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? I'm reading out of the New King James this morning which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. Now, here is what Paul prays for the people that are in his care. He prays this. He says, I pray that you would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Good God Almighty. Ooh, hallelujah. Shepherds, come on. Chief spiritual officers. And those of you that are under shepherds in the work. I pray that the eyes of your, uh, oh my God, I've had conflicts with, with, with some of our people. It's part, of, it goes with the job. You're going to have conflict. They're not going to always agree with you. You're not going to always agree with them. But when I walk away, this is what I pray. I pray that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. Hallelujah. I pray that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. Glory to God. You have an opinion, I have an opinion. You have a way, I have a way. But what we can do is pray. Pray that the eyes of our understanding is enlightened. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Pray. Pray. Pray, leaders. Pray over them. Pray over the ones that you're frustrated with. Pray over the ones that you're not quite happy with. Pray that the eyes of their understanding is enlightened. And pray that they would know what is the hope of his calling in their lives and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints many of them don't have a clue what their calling is many of them know they all are in everything they don't belong in and they're in stuff too long and they're in stuff that they, they don't want to get in stuff you gotta pray that the eyes of their understanding are enlightened to know the hope of his calling in their lives hallelujah 
And what is the exceeding greatness of God's power in them who believe? God, I'm teaching. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> My God, come on, Kim. Come on, hallelujah. What is the hope? And we have to pray. Paul said, ever since I heard of your faith, I have not ceased praying for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of them are, are competing with you. They don't even know it. They're jealous of you or they're in rivalry with you. Yes, they are. You're the only thing they see. We're the only thing that they mimic. We're the only thing that they follow. And many of them get a little information and start thinking that they smarter than you and start rising up against you, start talking back, try, start being sassy. It comes with the territory, folks. But if you're mentioning them in your prayers, glory to God, hallelujah. Woo, glory to God, glory to God. If you're mentioning them in your prayers, you will be able to disseminate that attack. You'll be able to disseminate. You'll be able to get rid of that thought that has them thinking you're their enemy. Nobody in their right mind is a shepherd and called of God that's trying to be an enemy to the sheep. But that is what the devil will put in their minds. I'm teaching better than you shouting up in here. Glory to God. We must pray for them. Glory to God. Now, 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 now. <laughs> Hallelujah. We must pray. We must pray for them. We must pray by the Spirit. We must pray in the Spirit. We must pray by the Spirit. We must understand that the enemy will grab them by their necks. If you yourself don't fall, the enemy will use them to make you fall. Moses didn't fall because he was an idol worshiper. Moses didn't fall uh, because he he was he was a gambler or rebel riser or fornicator. Moses failed because he allowed the people to frustrate him. Good God Almighty. Whoa, glory to God. Hip hop. Whoa, he, he did not make it, Dr. Hatcher, to the promised land, not because he was an evil man, he was stealing the money, or he was eating the, 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 the bread off of the table of showbread, or he was uh, 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 evil with the women. No, he didn't make it to the promised land because he allowed the people to frustrate him. Ooh, I'm telling you, folks, what is your prayer life like? We must pray for the people. God spoke to me early this morning, 2, 1 a.m., 1230. He said, pray for your people. Pray for them. So this is the prayer. I pray for them. I pray what Paul prayed. I pray over the people that's in my care that, I, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. I pray for them to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Whoa, hallelujah. I pray for them to receive what Holy Spirit has deposited in me, that they receive it without offense. Whoa, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter number one, he prays for them and then he teaches them. He said, I pray for you that you would come to know verse 19. What is the exceeding greatness of his power? Holy Spirit's power toward you who believe we've got to get to the place where we understand that people that we care for, that we shepherd, that we oversee, don't have the same fullness of understanding as we should have when it comes to the power of God. 
and teaching by itself and preaching by itself will not get them to maturity. We must pray for them. We must pray for them. We must pray for them. You can't preach them into maturity. You can't teach them into maturity and not pray them into it. Woo, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. What role does Holy Spirit pray, play, play in prayer? What role? And, and, and with everything, you that are our chief officers or you are our administrators or you are on our teams, you're on our staff, listen to me carefully. You have got to pray for the teams. You have got to be stronger in prayer than you are in protocol. Who am I talking to? You good in protocol, you good in standard operating procedures, but are you praying for the people? Are you praying with them when they when they jack stuff up and they don't follow the, the rules? Do you stop and say, okay, listen, let's just pray. Let me pray for you. Let me pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Let me pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Christ would intensify in your life. Let me pray. You are missing this, not because you're stubborn, not because you're mean, but you're missing this because your eyes, your spiritual eyes are darkened and you can't discern the Holy Spirit's will in this situation. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody needs to hear this. And this, if this is fresh from God, this is fresh from the spirit of the Lord. Somebody needs to hear what I'm saying. I see Elder Norman. God bless you. Hallelujah. We must pray. And Holy Spirit, one of, whole, one of Holy Spirit's strongest gifts in our lives is prayer. One of the, one of the strongest gifts, the strongest gift that he has given unto us is our ability to pray without interference, to pray, to have such a powerful prayer life. We're going we're gonna to focus on this, intensifying your prayer life, intensifying your prayer life. Oh my God, and I'm on no shade, intensifying your prayer life. Let me tell you something, no matter, no matter, no matter what the devil throws at you, we have been given the power of prayer. Prayer, prayer, <laughs> prayer, hallelujah. And when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you must understand the grace of praying in tongues. And the power of interpreting those prayers. Paul said, when you pray in the spirit, pray that you interpret. Glory to God. Ooh, we're going to spend some time in this. Hallelujah. Now, we, we, we're not even dealing yet with you praying for the shepherd. We're just dealing with shepherds praying for the people. Shepherds praying for the Holy, for the Holy Spirit to come upon the, up the people. And leadership praying for the people. Now, when we start talking about you praying and you having an intensified prayer life, do you understand what's going to happen? What is the role of Holy Spirit in prayer? What is the role of Holy Spirit in our prayer lives? It's more than just No, we are going to we are going to, to break this down and unpack this so that you are praying intentionally and you're praying specifically and you are interpreting what you pray. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let me tell you this. You cannot replace prayer with the word. You cannot, no matter how much learning you have, your burning doesn't come from the learning. 
your burning and your burden and your, your effectiveness and your efficacy, your leadership comes from your prayer life. From your prayer life. That's where yokes get destroyed. That's where the power of God rests in our prayer lives. And you cannot replace prayer or use the word as a substitution for prayer. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. I want you to write that down. Holy Spirit, help me to intensify, to strengthen my prayer life. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Holy Spirit, deal with me. <laughs> Take what's wrong and make it right. Spirit deal throughout the night. Holy Spirit deal with me. I give you authority until all in my life becomes yours. Yours until all in my life becomes yours. <laughs> Whoa, we go in there. We go in there. We go in there. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, strengthen, intensify my prayer life. Hallelujah. You cannot use scripture to replace prayer. You cannot use protocol to replace prayer. If you use protocol alone, you're going to get offended and you're going to be offensive. You're going to make it rough for folks. We have got to put Holy Spirit and his ministry of prayer back in Pentecost. I got to go. I love y'all. Woo! Share this. My God. My God. Share this. Share this. Hallelujah. And this is the week by the grace of God. We're going to dig in to Holy Spirit's role in prayer. Glory to God. I love y'all. Hey, listen. Share this. I'm telling you this is going to bless somebody. Share this. Praise God. Hallelujah. Put it on your page. Hashtag Pentecost in a pandemic. Hashtag Bishop Carletta J. Vaughn. Hashtag Holy Ghost in prayer. I'm telling you, it's going to be powerful. This is going to revolutionize your life. This is going to revolutionize your ministry, revolutionize your, your thinking, your family, and every other area. Praise God. The role of Holy Spirit and prayer is going to change the trajectory of your life. Hey, I got to go. I love y'all. <laughs> Whoa, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit.